Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show where the Teach Better team gets to join you live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have a very familiar, very familiar face with us this morning. Mike has done so much in our community and I'm so excited for you all to continue to connect with him. I am nursing a little bit of a cold, so I currently have some orange juice, but go grab your cup of coffee and we'll be right back. Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show. We have Mike here with us. Mike, how are you doing this morning? Good, I'm, I'm doing well. How are you, Ray? Good, good. good. You. I'm so excited that we get to <clears throat> talk shop this morning. Do you mind telling us a little about yourself? Yeah, um, so I'm a Teach Better ambassador. I got my sweatshirt on here, ready to go this morning. Um, I've been doing that for a couple of years. Um, my real job, I guess I would say, right, is uh, to... I'm a teacher at uh, Hilton Central School District, which is outside of Rochester, New York. Um, this is, uh, I'm in my 28th year. Um, so I've been around a little while. <laughs> um, so I teach uh, biology. I'm also our district 712 science program coordinator, um, which is a fancy term for, I get to pass on information from administration to our department and pass it back up to them. Um, and try to just coordinate any kind of changes and stuff that we need to make. Um, so that's My, me. Yeah, no, it's been really fun <clears throat> being connected to you. Sorry, I'm going to lose my voice. We've had so many good conversations about your experience as an educator. Obviously, use the grid method, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't used as much of the grid method lately, um, but it definitely was what got me going on to like mastery learning and, um, you know, and eventually into standards based grading and, and, and that kind of thing. So, yes, um, you've been a part of a few yeah. book studies we've done all that good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really love anything that's talking about, um, best practices for students, um, when it comes to assessment and, and grading and that kind of thing. Um, you know, it's amazing what a mark on a paper can do to a student, you know, in their psyche and what they think um, of themselves and the relationship with the teacher. So um, that's something I'm really, really passionate about for sure. Yeah, I know grading has been a huge passion of yours. I don't, I don't necessarily know where that started, although I vividly remember you being a part of a ambassador book study that, mm -hmm. that explored that. Do you mind sharing a little bit about where that passion came from of realizing that grading was going to have such a big impact on students. You wanted to add more of a focus. Yeah. I don't know exactly when and where it started. Um, but I know I was definitely frustrated with, um, you know, the, the common questions that students will pose to you. Um, sure. is this graded? Um, how many points is this worth? Uh, is there a bonus, you know, um, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. How much, all of those things are just like those point grabbing kind of questions, which, you know, we've trained our kids to do, you know, um, it, it's, um, I would say, I'm trying to think now, probably the um, 20, I'm trying to think, I can't even remember, but it's been a number of years now. I think I connected with some educators that were um, doing grade lists going yes. gradeless. And, yes. um, but before that I had, you know, I tried mastery grading. I had tried some standards based, but you know, our school is a uh, very uh, traditionally based a uh, hundred point scale kind of grading. So it's difficult to kind of, it almost was like try to fit a round peg in a square hole kind of thing. You know, it just didn't always seem to work, you know? Um, but I connected with some people and, and, um, what they were doing was, translating the learning into a grade through a grade conference at the end of a, a grading period. So I've kind of adopted that um, exactly 
how we get to that grade has really evolved a number of times. Um, my first year, I actually started and I had to pull back halfway through the year because a lot of it was, um, you know, kids don't know what they don't know sometimes. And, um, you know, there were too many uh, kids who were, I thought were doing really well and were saying like, you know, I don't know, I've got like an 80, you know, I'm like, oh, what? you know, if it was a traditional one, you'd be, you know, mid nineties or above that kind of thing, you know, but then we also had some kids going, oh, I really know all this stuff. And I'm thinking, yeah, not so much. Um, so I needed to tighten up um, exactly what it meant and how we got there. So well, and I think, came in. yeah, I think your evolution in learning how to be in a, an effective feedback provider to students was this exploration and grading and it doesn't happen overnight. I'm sure you went through many iterations of trying to find yeah. the right way to fit what your students needed as far as support into the system that you exist within, which I think is a, a huge success for many educators. We all kind of have that journey in our own way. And, and, you know, like a lot of people will say, well, I could never do that. I, it wouldn't work. And it didn't work for me, you know, not at first, you know, and that's the whole thing. It's like you said, it was an evolution. You know, it takes a long time and it's still going, you know, I'm already thinking about how I'm going to change it for next year. Um, so I, I would recently listening to something. I'm trying to remember what exactly what it was, but the, the point of it was very short a little uh, podcast or something like that. Um, and it said, just show up, you know, and it, it made me think about like, um, just a lot of like what's going on right now in the world, you know, and how this relates to my situation, I would say is, you know, like um, just every day is going to be a different adventure and we just have to show up and, and bring as much as we can to the table and hopefully be ready to evolve and change on the fly too. You know, that happens as well. Yeah. So. No, and I, I know we're going to have so much more to talk about as we transition in just a minute to our team talk section, but I know grading is such a passion for you, so I want our community to at least be aware that they can reach out to you to have those reflective conversations. The other thing that I want to dive into is your passion as an educator, continuing to support other educators in so many other things. So we'll be right back with our team talk. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us here on Teach Better Today Morning Show. Mike has been here talking about a number of different things, not only his involvement in our ambassador program, but choosing to also be an educator that's constantly learning, evolving in his practices through grading and so many other ways, supporting educators that he's connected with. I've seen that in our ambassador program, and I know it has a wide, wide variety. Mike, if you had to identify one idea or, or element that seems to be like your soapbox topic. You're like, I just really wish educators thought through this a little bit more or had more support in this area. What, what would be your go-to response? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think we have to we have to get to more of the what's best for kids versus what I learned when I was a, t a student, you know, and uh, so much of what we, at least I wasn't really formally taught on certain things and certain aspects of, of teaching. You know, we got a little tidbits here and there, but kind of learn on the fly. You learn from your, you know, who was your uh, supervising teacher doing student teaching and who was the, the person next door who had more years experience than you when you first started teaching. But in the most part, you know, especially back in the um, very early days of the internet, when I felt like I was teaching, um, there wasn't a lot of community, there wasn't a lot of support. And it was like, okay, um, my teachers gave me notes 
for the whole period and then a quiz, you know, okay, once in a while we do a lab, you know, yeah. that's what I do, you know, and I, I can't even imagine doing that now. I mean, 28 years ago, you know, it's like, ugh, you know, yeah. I wouldn't do those things now, you know? Um, so just being, thinking about like, what is the newest research? And and it's sometimes really hard to take that research and go, okay, what does this mean? You know, and so that but now there's such there's so many great people out there that are able to break it down for us, you know, like teach better, like what you guys do. Um and you know, just it's so much easier to do now, just uh listening to podcasts, listen, watching, you know, whatever. Um, so many opportunities, I think. So um yeah, I, I would say that is probably my well, Yeah, I mean, it's this reflection that we all need to acknowledge the fact that educator must have, and education must evolve. And as it evolves, you don't have to do it alone. And there's so many people out there that not only can interpret the new ways to support students, but also help you be more successful or just be a support system as, as you start to figure it out. I know you've done so much with our ambassador program to kind of lean on and also foster those conversations as a huge mentor in, in that crew. Do you feel like you've been able to step in even when situations seem to maybe not be in your expertise space, but still provide that, that moral support for educators that are problem solving through something challenging? Yeah. I mean, half the time is just listening, you know, and just listening to what's going on. Um, so I, I am a mentor in the uh, ambassador program, which um, basically um, it, it it seems funny to me because there's some of the educators that come in and I'm mentoring. I'm like, boy, what you're doing is like blowing me away, you know, like, so how am I going to help you? You know, I kind of think of that way. But, you know, it's more of in this situation to get everyone acquainted with how we do things in our in our ambassador program and how to get involved and how to stay connected. Um, I'm also um, do some instructional video coaching in my district. Um, so like I'm involved in that way. Um, when I started teaching, I was the youngest in my department by like about 15 to 20 years. Um, <laughs> so um, now everyone's, you know, pretty close to my age, maybe a couple of years younger, and we're starting to have a new wave kind of coming in. So, um, so I'm, I'm sharing a room with a um, 26 year old teacher and, you know, um, being much older than her, it, it's, it's fun. It's, it's her energy is great for me and to just bounce ideas off of each other, um, and talk it through is, is really what I love to do. Um, and I get to do that through the, uh, master program too, as a mentor. So, you know, Mike, I know you have so many things that you've been able to explore as an educator, share in your day to day, you know, position as an educator. You've also chosen to be extremely well rounded and build your professional learning network. So when you're struggling or when you're questioning, you can reach out to somebody close by. Do you mind sharing before we wrap up our conversation here a little tip or strategy for somebody listening who maybe wants to grow that professional learning network, but isn't quite sure how to get started to really make it feel authentic. Hmm. Um, you know, to just start following some people on um, on whatever social media platform you like to use. Um, I know uh, Instagram is big. I've never really gotten totally into Instagram. I've always been a, a Twitter person. Um, so I had joined a lot of Twitter chats and just connecting with people that way. Um, Facebook to all the Facebook groups and stuff like that to just, you know, start kind of like listening in, if you will. I mean, if you can listen in on a social media, but, um, you know, just kind of follow the conversation, interject questions once in a while, and you start to see connections. And, you know, when you feel like you've got some expertise in something to just share, you know, sharing is caring, they say, right? Um, and I think it builds a lot of connections with uh, yourself and other educators. So it's, it's a family, you know, we're all in the same boat. Um, I have a, a colleague and we were just saying he, he, he's a physics teacher, an AP physics teacher new, and he's amazed when he's joined this Facebook physics group. And they're like, it's like, they're all giving this stuff away. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> people like they're happy to give it away. And then, you know, when it's your turn, you give it away, you know, and that's how you just kind of 
keep building that um, that whole collegial support that we have for each other. Mm, so many good takeaways here, Mike. I so appreciate you jumping on to the Teach Better Today morning show, sharing your thoughts and also being an educator to celebrate as a continuous learner. I really, really appreciate the time, and I'm so glad you're able to join us this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was fun. For everyone else, we hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Thank you for tuning in to Teach Better Today Morning Show, and we'll see you next time on this on this morning. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today Morning Show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. (laughs) The comments are always so entertaining. (laughs) We'll see you tomorrow. 